Hello everyone, this is Dr. Anjali Shravastava, retired Professor Jamshedpur Women's College. And this is my YouTube channel, Adarsh Alaya, created in memory of my beloved son, Adarsh Shravastava, a senior Googler uh, and a very, very brilliant student. The platform is created to help those students who want to learn. Today we are going to discuss about the rotifera, phylum rotifera, a minor, minor phyla. The, as, uh, as I have already told you, these are the topics uh, required uh, to discuss by my MSc uh, uh, students. So to start with, this is rotifera. It is a very important, very interesting topic that uh, the rotifers, they show a very unique feature uh, rather a number of unique features and they the this term rotifera has been derived from the uh, uh, two latin words uh, you can say that is a rotus is bead like and fera is uh, uh, the skin fera so these are the animals this is uh, the general photographs taken from a magazine this is the uh, typical delaria uh, rotifer having a beautiful co corona, we like uh, anterior structure, a body and a foot with two toes. This is the photograph and uh, this is the another uh, rotifer than a, and that is Monogonota, which is uh, swimming in the water. Uh, it is a zooplankton. So let's start with its distribution, habit and habitat as our main topic is the discussion of about its characters and uh, affinities and distribution. The rotifers, uh, the term derived from the Latin rota means wheel and fur is bearing. Commonly called wheel animals or wheel animal cues make up a phylum rotifera of microscope and near microscopic pseudo silomate animals these are the pseudo silomate animals that is the silome is of false silome that is the true silome is not uh, found that a uh, very important characteristic of uh, its uh, uh, nearby or uh, receding uh, group that is the platyhelminths of non chordata so this is a character that shows close affinity with her planty helminths also. The affinities we will see in the last. Regarding the history, the rotifers were first described by Rave John Harris in 1696, and other forms were described by Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek in 1703. Most rotifers are around 0.1 to 0.5 millimeter long. That is, they are the very microscopic animals, their size although can range from 50 micromio to over two millimeter. And are common in freshwater environment throughout the world within few saltwater species. Generally, they are the freshwater animals, but a few marine species are also reported. Regarding their uh, behavior or habit and habitat, some rotifers are free swimming and truly plankton. Others move by inch worming along a substrate. Inch worming is like this is the substratum and uh, like a worm they uh, move in this way uh, inch inch karke jisko kehte hain khisatna is tarah se inki movement hoti hai that is inch worming we will see in one diagram how they are moving uh, this this is the inch worming movement i i'll just show you in this in one diagram this, uh, okay, we'll see when we'll uh, do the locomotion separately. Here, uh, let us see first the habit and habitat. Some are sessile, living inside tubes or gelatinous hole paths that are attached to a substrate. Rather, they are planktonic, free swimming, but they are also uh, substrate sessile, which are in tubes. Mein rehte hai. About 25 species are living in colonies, that is, colonial forms are also there. Example is Synantherina semibulata, either sessile or planktonic. Rotifers are an important part of the freshwater zooplankton, being a major food source and with many special species also contributing to the decomposition of soil organic matter. 
they are used in, in generally in the fisheries or in the aquarium uh, side they are used for to clean the water body most species of ro rotifers are cosmopolitan but there are also some endemic species like cephalodela vitata to lake baikal usually they are cosmopolitan find, found worldwide but a few species are restricted to particular species uh, areas Recent backcoding evidence, however, suggests that some cosmopolitan species, such as Brachyonus plicatilis, Brachyonus caliciflorus, Licane bulla, are some of the species which are actually species complexes. They are the colonies. In some recent treatments, sortifers are placed with acanthocephalans in a large clad called Cindermata. Cantocephala is an, another uh, minor phyla group, uh, such as uh, the rotifers are, and they together, according to the, to the latest uh, phylogeny, they have been kept together in a, another clad that is called a cindermata. In June 2021, biologists reported the restoration of Deloitte rotifers after being frozen for 24,000 years in the Siberian Perma frost. They are said to be very much uh, 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 resisting environment. बहुत लंबे लंबे समय तक पाया गया कि ये drying uh, dry atmosphere में अपने आप को बहुत लंबे समय तक survive करा सकते हैं in dry condition and they regerminate when they get the uh, favorable conditions. Now the another important aspect is the taxonomy and naming. As we have seen, taxonomical uh, position is also very much peculiar. The taxonomy can be said as a flux. बहुत uh, decided taxonomy अभी तक नहीं है. अभी भी इस पर बहुत सारे काम हो रहे हैं. Some of the scientists they are of the opinion कि कुछ और species कुछ में include किया जाए rotifer group में, such so, such as the Canthocephala. So uh, the Ray John Harris first described the rotifers, in particular a Deloitte rotifer in 1696 as an animal-like large member that could contract itself into a spherical figure and then stretch itself out again. ये बहुत ही peculiar shapes दिखाते हैं अपने आप को बिल्कुल तेजी से flourish करते हैं अपना mouth खोलते हैं food को पकड़ते हैं या फिर जब flow करते रहते हैं तो बहुत और ऑफेंस की जब ऑफेंसिव फील करते हैं तो कॉन्ट्रैक्ट कर लेते हैं अपने कोरोना को इनसाइड एंड कन टर्न देम सेल्फ इन स्पेरिकल शेप्स द एंड ऑफ इट्स टेल अपीयर्ड विद द फोर्स ऑफ लाइक दैट ऑफ एन ईयर वी तो हियर वी कैन सी ये मैगॉड की तरह का एक ऑर्थोपोड एंड लार्वा से रिजम्बल करता है जब अपने आप को कॉन्ट्रैक्ट कर लेता है तो ईयर वीक की तरह से रिजम्बल करता है सो हियर इट वी आर लुकिंग दैट दे आर शोइंग अफिनिटीज विद द ऑर्थ्रोपोर्ट्स आल्सो इन 1702 एंटोनी वैन लिवन हैज गिव अ डिटेल डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ रोटिफर वुलगारिस एंड सब्सिक्वेंटली डिस्क्राइब मेलीसर्टा रिंजेंस एंड अदर स्पीसीज ही वॉज ऑल्सो द फर्स्ट टू पब्लिश ऑब्जर्वेशन ऑफ द रीवाइबिफिकेशन ऑफ सर्टन स्पीसीज आफ्टर ड्राइंग as i have told you they have got a tremendous capacity of uh, come up as the adverse conditions uh, are over or agar bahut desiccating atmosphere hai bahut drying atmosphere hai to ye apne aap ko revive karne ke liye close karke spores ki tarah uh, protect karke rakhte hain water molecules ko loose karke that is a very unique uh, capacity they show they show Other forms were described by other observers. History they have gone a um, uh, long history. So many uh, workers are having interest, show have shown interest, and uh, uh, in these publications of Ehrenberg's, this is the dye infusion tradition. All Swalko many organization uh, in 1838 me uh, Christian Jod, uh, Godfrey ne show kia tha. the rotifers were recognized as being multicellular animals about 2200 species of rotifers have been described their taxonomy is currently in a state of flux one treatment places them in phylum rotifera with three classes cisnoidia deloidia and monogononta the largest group is monogononta with about 1500 species followed by deloidia with 350 species and there are only two genera with three species of 
Sisonida, Nidia, so, sorry, Sisionidia. The Canthocephala, the previous, previously considered to be a separate phylum, have been demonstrated to be modified rotifers. The exact relationship to, uh, of the other members has not been yet resolved. One possibility is that Canthocephala are closer to Deloidia and Monogononta than to the Sisonoidia. The corresponding names and relationships are shown here. This is a syndromata. It is uh, the, according to the latest concept. This uh, this is the cladder uh, uh, the cladder system of uh, uh, the phylum Rotifera as described as yet. The there is a group formed syndromata including five uh, classes. This is Sisonida, Eurotatoria, Deloidia, Monogononta, and Acanthocephala. This is uh, the classification according to the latest, till uh, this classification has been identified, and this is the uh, cladogram uh, created uh, showing the latest classification. This is the Rotifera, and this is the Canthocephala uh, according to one classification. There are five uh, classes, and these together form a group that is the Sindermata, and uh, including all these four classes. And this acanthocephala, which was previously considered and still by the other uh, workers is being considered as a uh, separate uh, minor phyla. So whatever the case is, abhi chal rahi hai, bhoat saare, bhoat saare, uh, aise bhi abhi, uh, discussions and observations chal rahe hai ki kuch aur species ko group mein include kiya jayega. So but that hasn't been um, finalized yet. And these are the two diagrams of showing the general morphology. This is the lateral view and this is the ventral view of the a single uh, diagrammatic representation, rather we can say of a, a, a typical rotifera. The body is divisible into head, neck, and body and foot. This is the head with the corona uh, having uh, a trophy-like jaws. Then this is the neck, this is the body region, and this is the foot region with two toes. Now, some particular behaviors of uh, rotifera are here to be uh, uh, noticed. The rotifera, strictly speaking, are confined to Deloidia and mon mo Monogononta. Rotifera, uh, Canthocephala, and Sisonida make up a clad called Sindermata. Now, etymology, as we have already seen, inka, uh, inko, Name, name, uh, name, in hua, name uh, on the basis of a neo Latin word meaning wheel bearer, due to the corona around the mouth that is concerned, sequential mo motion resembles a wheel. Wheel ki tarah dekhne mein lagta hai, but it is not movable. Wheel ki tarah ghumta nahi hai. Then behavioral uh, structures, behavioral characters are the, the biology, the corona, cilia, pull the animal when unattached to the water. They are eutelic, that is cell number is always fixed. Like many other microscopic animals, adult trotifers frequently exhibit eutely. That is, they have a fixed number of cells within a species, usually an order uh, on the order of 1,000 and so on. Kareeb kareeb 1,000 ke multiplications mein cells hote hain, but zyada tar 1,000 rehte hain. Then the genome, the Deloitte rotifer genome contains two or more divergent copies of each gene suggesting a long-term asexual evolutionary history. For example, four copies of HSP82 are found. Each is different and found on a different chromosome, excluding the possibility of homozygous sexual reproduction. Later we will see, when we will see the life cycle, they show a very interesting cycle of emictic and mictic cycle or asexual or sexual cycle. Now their feeding behavior is very much interesting. They are uh, used as the scavengers. They eat particular on the particulate organic detritus, dead bacteria, algae and protozoans. They eat particles up to 10 micrometers in size. And like crustaceans, rotifers contribute to nutrient recycling. Ecological importance is really in here. They are used in fresh tanks to help clean the water to prevent clouds of waste matter. Rotifers affect the species composition of algae in ecosystem through their no choice in grazing. 
Rotifers may complete with cladocera, compete with cladocera and copepod for planktonic food resources, probably of genus Cephalodela. So there, uh, we are looking here in a number of cases they are showing affinities with a number of orthopods that uh, we will see in, uh, in the last when we will do the uh, affinities. Now this is the repetition. This is the classification before entering into the common characteristics. Again, the introductory uh, top, uh, paragraph we can say, phylum rotifera derives name from wearing a wheel, prominent circular array of cilia at the interior end of the animal that looks like a rotating wheel. This is called as trochal disc or corona. आगे की तरफ जैसा हम लोगों ने पहले भी देखा है ट्रॉकल डिस्क या कोरोना की तरह का स्ट्रक्चर है और इंटरनली दिस माउथ और दिस कोरोना कंटिन्यूज इनटू अ स्ट्रक्चर दैट इज कॉल्ड एज ट्रॉफी जॉ की तरह का स्ट्रक्चर होता है जिसको ट्रॉफी भी कहते हैं रोटिफर्स ऑकर प्राइमरीली इन फ्रेश वाटर एंड ऑल आर माइक्रोस्कोपिक दे पॉज एज अट ऑफ चीविंग स्ट्रक्चर स्ट्रक्चर कॉल्ड मैस्टैक्स विथ टीथ विच इज लोकेटेड डाउन इन दैरिंग एंड यूज फॉर फूड श्रेडिंग and this mastax is a continuation of the trophy that is the jaw like structure a representative genus is hydatina which is common freshwater rotifer now the body plan there is they are the bilaterally symmetrical animal mouth is located at the ventral edge of the trophal disc the trunk is the main part of the body and there is a foot with two toes that is forked at the posterior end the anus is located mid dorsally so uh, this is the classification part of uh, this is the uh, generalized body plan in lateral view and in ventral view this is the uh, apical sensory cilia this is the corona part this is the corona part very beautifully shown here of course these all diagrams are diagrammatic this is laterally the head neck trunk and foot this is the foot having wearing two toes and these are the internal parts the anatomical parts that we will see one by one when we will see the anatomy this is the generalized body plan now the generalized body plan shows a number of variations in their body plan there is a great variation in body plan some species are uh, uh, free living some are planktonic pelagic the corona is variously modified some species are case builders and some are viviparous the genus of planktna has a digestive tract that stops after the stomach digestive system ka alag alag grade hota hai organization ka zyada tar uh, rotifers ka well uh, developed digestive system hota hai but there are certain forms jisme nahi bhi hota hai now cell constancy is like acanthocephala that there is limited number of egg cells but not the sperm now this is the generalized body plan of a rotifer this is the mouth surrounded by a corona here uh, the wheel like trophy is present that continues into the mastax that continues uh, into the pharynx this is the dorsal part this is the ventral part there here is the dorsal anus through which the digestive food particle and excretory waste are thrown, thrown out and this is the food bearing two toes now these are the uh, this is the photograph taken from a uh, magazine where various variation in body shapes of rotifera is shown these are the different rotifers showing various number of various uh, shapes and sizes now the uh, rotifers the uh, regarding their characters this is again a diagrammatic representation of an overview of a rotifera this is the uh, the female side and this is the male side they are uh, sexually dimorphic forms uh, morphology may be in my variations dikhai dete hain uh, but the gonad is always single agar ye female hai to single ovary hai male hai to single testis hai and the, the this is the digestive part this is the uh, tropical uh, region this is the trophy this is the mastax this is the pharynx the these detailed structures we will see when we will do the digestive system now the external features are, uh, if we see one by one the cuticle the body uh, wall is covered with a cuticle uh, where this cuticle uh, thickens to form a lorica that covers the body the cuticle or lorica provides protection the fluid is in pseudo silom providing support but cuticle is the main supportive element and epidermis is of sensorial uh, nature 
Since I tell, I think you all must be knowing the, the cellular layer, devoid of cellular boundaries, बहुत सारे nuclei रहते हैं जो करीब करीब as we have seen के thousands में के numerical में रहते हैं and that type of arrangement uh, shows their affinity with the uh, helmet group. Uh, in this sac, plasma membranes are present between the nuclei, the epidermis is uh, syncytium. The head contains the corona, mouth, sensory organs, and the brain. Head region mein mouth, uh, corona hai, sensory organs hai, brain hai. Then the trunk is largest part of the rotifer elongated and sac-like dianus occurs dorsally on the posterior end of the trunk. This is very peculiar characteristic. Abhi hum logo ne dekha, anus dorsal hota hai. Now the food, posterior narrow portion of rotifer is called the food. The terminal portion of the food bears, this is the spelling mistake here it is. The, this is the posterior reason. Oh, sorry. This will be the, the, food bears one or two toes. There are certain spelling mistakes while typing. One or two toes. At the base of the foot are many pedal glands. The ducts open on the toes. The foot is attached to the substratum with the secretions of these glands. Now, the next is the feeding and digestive system. The the digestive system is uh, almost well developed in the generally in uh, the uh, rotifers, uh, bearing uh, the most rotifers feed on small microorganisms and suspended organic material, the corona. Uh, coronal cilia create a current of water. This current brings food particles into the mouth. Digestive system is composed of pharynx, stomach, intestine, and cloacal bladder. The pharynx is a uh, bears a kind of structure called mastax or the jaws, and uh, this mastax is a muscular organ grinding food. The inner wall of mastax contains several sets of jaws called trophy. The trophy have different structures. Now the stomach is a swollen part of the digestive system. Enters the food enters into the ciliated stomach. Salivary and digestive glands secrete. Digestive enzymes into the pharynx and stomach. Digestion is extracellular and absorption of food takes place in the stomach. Then is the intestine and the cloacal border. In some species, ciliated intestine forms cloacal bladder. It receives water from the protonephridia and eggs from the ovaries. It also receives digestive waste. So the cloacal blood, bladder opens to the outside by anus. Anus is present at the junction of the food and trunk. So this is the generalized structure, all the, uh, this is the digestive system, uh, mainly uh, a deloid uh, rotifer. This is the structure that shows all the uh, digestive part, the excretory part, that is the protonephridium. They open together and the reproductive portions, they open together through a cloacal opening into the dorsal anus. And uh, this is the, uh, this is the, uh, male uh, part having a small penis just before the food through which, um, uh, with the help of which the eggs are, uh, the sperms are introduced into the female body. And this is the female part. Now, this is another uh, simplified and diagrammatic representation, representation of a rotifer body showing all anatomical structures. The body wall, as we have already seen, critically is secreted by epidermis. Epidermis is syncytium. There is no cell boundary. Muscles do not occur in distinct layers, but are scattered around in bundles and individual fibers. They uh, do not uh, form a continuous layer. Body cavity is a pseudocilome. That is, it is obliterated and not true coelom. Food and digestion, uh, this is, uh, the food is, uh, chewed by the help of the mastax and the food is passed through the short esophagus into a large stomach. Digestion is aided by digestive juices secreted by gastric glands located near the anterior end of the uh, stomach. Absorption occurs here in, in the region of intestine also. The stomach gives way to the intestine and finally enters the cloaca, which is a common cavity for excretory, reproductive and digestive system. 
then comes the circulation, respiration, and excretion. The distribution of materials through pseudocilium is accomplished by a simple slopping around and diffusion. Respiration is also by diffusion. Flame cells perform the excretion, forming the protonephridia. That is the important structure. Uh, nephridium, ka, very primitive type of nephridium, that is protonephridium, starts here with the flame cell. They, which help in excretion. They occur in a definite number and pattern and empty into a coiled pair of excretory ducts which join at posterior end, where they form an elaborate bladder that runs into cloaca. Excretion by protonephridia. You can see here, the, these are the excretory structures. In this uh, diagram, it is very clear. This is the bladder. This uh, where includes uh, the excretory ducts, reproductive ducts, and digestive intestinal uh, opening all open in this bladder and then uh, opens outside through the anus. So this is the circulation, respiration, and excretion. The main uh, way is uh, by process of diffusion. Then support and protection, the cuticle supports the animal locomotion is very important part. They show two kinds of locomotion, ciliary activity of on the corona and crawling on the vegetation by making particular use of the food. That is inch movement, that inch worm movement that we have seen in the very beginning. Fatal gland secrete adhesive material which comes out on the foot and it can thus help in adhering the animal to the surface. The movement is of inchworm type. Some rotifers are sessile and live in gelatinous case that is secreted around them, and some towns bind by their feces. So this is the mus musculature in uh, bands in form of these are the different uh, sets of bands uh, forming uh, the musculature of the rotifera. And this is the movement, locomotory movement by, of rot uh, a rotifer that is the bind, bound then they come to the, as I have told you, they come down, then they stretch themselves. And in this way, this is the inch worm movement they show. Now, this is the diagram showing the digestive system, the well-developed digestive system is here. And these are the protonephridial structures that help in excretion in rotifers. This is the protonephridia, this is cloaca, distal part of terminal, this is the protonephridial channel. This continues into, and this is a long tube-like structure, and this tube ka agar ye ek portion ko enlarge karke yahan dikhaya gaya hai ki kis tarah se flame cells yahan pe, these are the flame cells, they are for arranged forming basket-like structure, then this is the cytoplasmic rod, cytoplasmic cap. You can say this is a part of the excretory duct. So this is the excretory system. This is another uh, uh, lateral and fr front view of the general, showing the general anatomy of the um, rotifers. Now, this is the uh, photograph taken uh, of female and male nervous system from Frontiers in Zoology. It, uh, book ka ye part hai, photographs gaya hai, nervous system ke, in the males and females of different types of rotifers. The details you can go through the images of nervous system uh, of rotifers, and you can get a lot of images if you want. Now comes the other organ, organ systems, including the nervous system and the sense organs. The all visceral organs lie, uh, lie in pseudocilum, which is filled with a fluid and interconnecting amoeboid cells. The protonephridia opens into cloacal uh, bladder. The function of protonephridia is mainly the osmoregulation. Rotifers exchange gases and remove nitrogenous waste through the body surfaces. The nervous system is composed of two lateral nerves and a bilobed brain. It is here shown. This is the brain region, and the two bilobed uh, structures are there, and then the nerves come out of this. The nervous system, as I have shown in this uh, photograph, it can be seen from here. The brain is present on dorsal surface of mastax. Numerous, numerous ciliary clusters and sensory bris bristles act as sensory structures. They are concentrated on short antennae or the corona. One to five photosensitive eye spots, uh, eye spots are present on the head. Now, the reproduction and development this is a chapter which is very much interesting in the rotifera. The female and male reproductive systems are present uh, uh, in the different forms. That is, they are dioecious and sexual dimorphism is there. They show various, uh, various uh, interesting behaviors, reproductive behaviors, 
in uh, form of alternate cycles uh, that may be called as sexual or asexual cycle or mictic and amictic cycle depending on the uh, environmental conditions dry season mein ye apne aap ko extend karne ke liye apne aap ko dried up condition mein bhi apne aap ko uh, adapt karte hain the female reproductive system cons uh, consists of a single ovary a syncytial multinucleate vitellarium is attached in it it produces yolk for eggs the ovary and the vitellarium fuse to form a single germovitellarium after fertilization each egg travels to a short oviduct it enters into cloaca bladder and passes out through its opening the male reproductive system is a mouth cloacal bladder and other digestive organs are absent in males this is very interesting males are very less feeding uh, organisms or in their life span we accordingly bahut short hota hai a single testis produces sperm sperm travel through a ciliated vas deferens enter into gonopore the male rotifers have an irreversible penis it injects sperm into the pseudocilium of the female and it is called hypodermic impregnation so this is the after the reproductive uh, gametes they fuse in one class uh, cisonidia the females produce haploid eggs the egg is it uh, uh, is fertilized to de uh, develop into the males or females ye bahut hi particular fertilization mein ek bahut particular behavior paya jata hai rotifers mein parthogenetic uh, development bhi hota hai जो कि हैप्लॉयड भी हो सकता है डिप्लॉयड भी हो सकता है विदाउट फर्टिलाइजेशन भी ये अडल्ट में डेवलप हो सकते हैं दैट मे बी मेल दैट मे बी फीमेल इन अनदर क्लास डेलॉयडिया और फीमेल्स आर पार्थोडिजेनेटिक कभी मेल्स पार्थेनोजेनेटिक होते हैं कभी फीमेल्स पार्थेनोजेनेटिक होते हैं दिस इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग कि ये पार्थेनोजेनेटिक फॉर्म्स भी या डिप्लॉयड भी हो सकते हैं या हैप्लॉयड भी हो सकते हैं दे प्रोड्यूस डिप्लॉयड एग्स दीज एग्स हैच इन टू डिप्लॉयड फीमेल्स जबकि अगर हैप्लॉयड uh, एग्स से डेवलप होते हैं तो दीज आर जनरली मेल्स एंड दे आर हैप्लॉयड फॉर्म्स नाउ द इन मोनोगोनटा टू डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ एग्स आर प्रोड्यूस एमिक्टिक एंड मिक्टिक ना डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द माइटोटिक एंड मियोटिक बिहेवियर द लाइफ साइकिल ऑफ रोटिफर्स मे बी ऑफ एमिक्टिक टाइप और मिक्टिक टाइप amictic cycle females produce amictic eggs by mitosis these eggs are diploid mitosis se aap you must be remembering mitosis mein hamesha diploid cells bante hain these cannot be fertilized therefore they develop directly into amictic females therefore first amictic cycle starts these female develops large population quickly amictic female jo mitosis se uh, develop karte hain aur diploid hote hain wo bahut tezi se uh, uh, रिप्रोडक्शन करते हैं रिप्रोड्यूस करते हैं एसेक्चुअली और बहुत लार्ज पॉपुलेशन बनाते हैं सम अदर एग्स बिकम डॉर्मेंट अनदर एमिक्टिक साइकिल स्टार्ट्स व्हेन मोर डॉर्मेंट एग्स आर प्रोड्यूस इट ऑकर्स बिफोर द इयरली साइकिल इज ओवर वेंट्स और बर्ड्स डिस्पर्स डॉर्मेंट एग्स दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फीचर द एग्स आर कैन रिमेन डॉर्मेंट फॉर इयर्स ऑलमोस्ट नाइन इयर्स टू एंड मोर बहुत सालों तक if unfavorable conditions mein weather ke uh, unfavorable uh, conditions mein ye dormant eggs reh sakte hain and they germinate when they get the favorable time then another cycle is mictic cycle some amictic females produce mictic eggs in summer by meiosis these are thin shell eggs the, the eggs are haploid some mictic eggs are not fertilized they develop into a male the haploid eggs jab unfertilized hote hain So pathogenetically, they develop into male, whereas mictic eggs are fertilized and secrete a thick, heavy shell. These become dormant or resting winter eggs. When uh, uh, weather cold ho jata hai, so the dormant eggs ke form me rehte hain, dormant uh, stage me rehte hain and wait for the for favorable uh, period. Dormant egg is hatched in melting snows and in spring rains. They develop into amictic females. most females lay amictic or mictic eggs but not both the physiological condition during uh, of the female oocyte development determines whether the egg will be amictic or mictic so this is the amictic and mictic cycle this is not very much clear here i am showing you given giving you the another uh, figure in which this mictic and amictic uh, cycle is very clear 
Now the sensitivity rotifers are sensitive uh, all over body and especially on the truffle disc. They are the, having the structures on the corona and the dorsal feeler eye spot. So these uh, things we have already discussed, the copulation done by hypodermic impregnation. This is also done now. The life cycle, as we have seen, there are different types of life cycles uh, in different group of rotifera. Separate sexes are all, all, are all alike occur in marine environment. There is alternation of generation between pathogenesis and fertilization phases, and only females are present that multiply by parthenogenesis. Now, this is the amectic cycle and the mectic cycle. This is the amectic female, this is the, they are the diploid eggs, and this is the mectic cycle that is uh, developing by uh, the haploid conditions here, then fertilization occurs, then diploid condition occurs, and this is the alternation of generation. It can be seen an uh, alternation of amectic and mectic cycles during the reproduction. This is the this two modes we have already discussed the emictic and mectic cycle. This is the language of difference between the emictic and mectic cycles. So uh, the resting eggs will develop and hatch into emictic female after exposure to the specific environmental conditions. These can be the result of changes in environmental conditions, eventually creating alternation in temperature or salinity or changing food conditions. It should be emphasized that rotifer density of population plays an important role in determination of the mode of reproduction. Although the mechanism is not completely understood, it is generally believed that the production of resting eggs is a survival strategy of population through unfavorable environmental conditions such as drought or cold. Now, this is the female uh, reproductive system of a rotifera. This is diagrammatic representation, and this is the this is the female uh, reproductive system: ovary, ovum, oviduct, cloaca, and this is the digestive system: cloacal pore that is opening through uh, out through the anus, and this is the uh, male reproductive system: testis, prostatic glands, sperm duct, gonopore, and here uh, uh, lies in the just before the opening of the anus is a hemi penis. And this is the amectic and mectic cycle uh, showing the diploid and haploid conditions. So this is about the, uh, uh, the reproductive system and anatomy. Now the resting eggs, as we have seen, it can uh, be, uh, the resting eggs may be uh, wait for several decades and can resist adverse periods when favorable condition return after an obligatory period of diapause which varies among some species, resting eggs hatch, releasing diploid emictic females that enter into asexual phase of cycle. That is, the asexual and sexual phases are alternated here. Then, a very important characteristic is found in uh, rotifers is anhydrobiosis. That is, if you do desiccation se bacha karke apne ko beej ke roop mein seeds ke roop mein bahut bahut lambe samay tak preserve kar sakte hain this is the lord rotifer females cannot cannot produce resting eggs however deloidia mein ye anhydrobiosis bahut kam paya jata hai many can survive the facility is called as anhydrobiosis and organism is called as and hydrobionts. Under drought condition, the large uh, rotifers contract into inert form and lose almost all body water. When rehydrated, they resume activity within a few hours. The large can survive the dry state for long periods. Uh, while in other hydrobionts, such as green shrimp, this desiccation is uh, uh, thought to be linked to the production of tree uh, uh, tri a type of uh, sugar, it is non reducing disaccharide sugar. Dalards apparently cannot synthesize trihalose, halose, uh, um, so they are not capable of uh, showing anhydrobiosis. In Dalards, major cause of resistance to desiccation as well as resistance to ionized radiation is a highly efficient mechanism for repairing of DNA. DNA double strand breaks induced by these agents. This repair mechanism likely involves mitotic recombination between homologous DNA regions. Deloid mein jaha par uh, ye uh, sugar trihalose nahi paya jata, waha par DNA repairing mechanism se wap, uh, Deloid sapne aapko desiccation se bachate hain aur lambe samay tak survive karte hain. 
Rotifers fall prey to many animals, so they are the, there are predators also of rotifers, such as copepods, fishes, bryozoa, comb jelly, jellyfish, starfish, and uh, tradigrades. Now, the genome size of Dilloid rotifer adinta, uh, adinata vaga was reported to be around 244 MB. The genome of monogonon seemed to be significantly smaller than of Dilloids. In monogonanta, the nuclear DNA content in eight different species of four different genera ranged almost fourfold from 0.12 to 0.46. Haploid 1C genome sizes in Brachyonus species range at least from 0 0.056 to 0 0.416. So this is the genome size, and this is again the metric and metric cycle shown representation here also. This is the environmental conditions, how they prefer the sexual pathogenetic and sexual cycles they uh, show. Now, loss of sexual reproduction system, that is the ancient asexuals, a very peculiar behavior is shown by these rotifers. Uh, the new study provides evidence for inter-individual genetic exchange and recombination in Adinata vaga species previously thought to be anciently asexual. This asexual condition is uh, uh, sometimes it has been assumed that they show without sex for many millions of years. Males are absent within the species, female reproduce only by parthenogenesis. So now uh, the, uh, the transitions of sexual and asexual forms have been observed recently. Sexual reproduction can be inherited in a simple Mendelian fashion in the monogonon tortifer. Brachyonus calici uh, florus. Species can normally switch between sexual and asexual reproduction, that is the cyclical parthenogenesis, but occasionally give rise to purely asexual lineage, obligate parthenogenesis. These lineages are unable to reproduce sexually due to being homozygous for a recessive allele. This is a very particular behavior transitional uh, uh, stages between the sexual and asexual reproduction shown by particular type of rotifers very interestingly. So with this, uh, this is the now with this ends the general characters distribution habit habitat of rotifera and the last the affinities of rotifera. The, we have seen how many types of affinities they show affinities with uh, a number of invertebrates or non podates groups. The first is the affinities with platyhelminths. These are the resemblances, pigmentative form of corona, maybe uh, like the turbellarians, uh, ciliary zone. Formation of trophies uh, like the turbellarian worms, flame cells containing protonephrygial system and rhabdocele. Then differences are the anus is absent in turbularian, absence of subepidermal continuous muscles, lack of epidermal nervous plexus, affinities with nematodes. The similarities are uh, with, uh, this is the affinities with nematodes are this here. Similarities in cytial epidermis. Uh, pseudomic, uh, pseudo pseudocelomic body cavity gut containing mouth and anus, no larval form. Then are, this is the affinities with nematodes, uh, affinities with arthropods and complete metamerism presence of cuticles on body, bristle bearing arms similar to appendages of crustacean larva. Now the affinities with anelida, there are structural similarities between trochophore larva and peculiar Rotifer trochosperia larva described by Hashek in 1878. Following parts of trochospore uh, larva is similar with trochophora, that is, ciliary girdle, bent intestine, and excretory organ. According to whom, rotifers are simply annelids that remain in larval stage only. It assumes that similarities can be coincidence with no taxonomic relation and phylogenetic history. So this is the rotifera and acanthocephala, different forms showing affinities. And the lastly, the phylogenetic position of rotifera. Rotif rotifers are bilateral symmetric animals belonging to protostomia. The ultrastructure of rotifera trophy suggests that they belong to gnathifera and ultrastructural similarities between the ecumens and spermatozoa 
as well as molecular evidence strongly suggests that rotifers and the parasitic acanthocephalans are closely related and form the clad cindermata. Uh, we discussed the phylogenetic position of rotifers with regard to gnatiferan groups. Originally, gnatifera only included the hermaphrodite gnathos stomulida and the cindermata. The, the cynepomorphy supporting gnatifera is the presence of pharyngeal hard parts such as jaws and trophy with similar structure. The newly discovered micro Natozoa possesses such jaws and is a strong candidate for inclusion in Natifera because their cellular integument also has an apical intracytoplasmic lamina as in Cindermata. So these are the different groups as I've already seen in the uh, beginning that these groups are uh, uh, still uh, working on taxonomy is going on. So many uh, groups are being included. So these are the various groups which are uh, on the process of being included in the group Rotifera only. And the, this is the ecological importance is here. They are extremely resistant to environmental differences. Uh, most species are worldwide in distribution. The economic importance we have seen indirectly, they live all of primary producers. So in conclusion, it can be said that rotifers show a number of interesting features in their distribution, habit and habitat and structural peculiarities. They show varieties of peculiar behavior, phenomena and affinities. Their phylogeny, taxonomy, as well as their ecology makes them occupying very interesting place in study of non chordate minor phyla. Their genomic conditions are drawing attention of scientists regarding their evolutionary and phylogenetic position in animal kingdom. So thank you.